Hello, uh, coming to you today from my guest room and we're gonna talk a little bit about organizational patterns. So um, organizational patterns questions are questions that the kids really struggle with on the star. And when we look at the teak, we have to be really careful because the teak says analyze the characteristics, including organizational patterns that support multiple topics, categories, and subcategories. And so I think a lot of our materials, like for example, scope has some really great stuff, but all scope asks the kids to do is identify the text structure. So what words and phrases help you identify the structure or explain how you know which text structure it is using evidence from the text. Um, this one, what does the author compare and contrast? So all of these questions are asking the kids just to identify the text structure and they do need to identify the text structure before they can analyze it. But if they only identify the text structure, they're not gonna get to the level of the teak. So we're gonna kind of look at what that looks like. So on the star test, here's an example. How does the author organize the section? So you do get at the beginning of each question some kind of verb usually um, that tells which text structure might be in the section. So explain, comparing, describing, stating. But then it's what comes after it that kind of trips the kid up because it's not just what text structure is it, but how is the author using it? Is the author emphasizing something with the text structure? Is the author suggesting something because they use that text structure? Is the author identifying something by describing? Is the author, there it is, showing something by stating? So the kids really need to look at each section, that first part of the answer, and verify whether or not it makes sense for the text. And they also have to check on that second part, and that's often where they fall down. So they'll be able to pick a place in the text where one of these things happens, but they don't necessarily get to this piece, the suggest, the emphasize, the identify, the show. Um, other ways it might look, the author organizes the selection by, and again, we get comparing, explaining, detailing, and describing. And again, the kids are gonna need to go back in the text to verify what's the rest of that question, whether or not it's true. Um, another way, the problem solution organization of paragraph two helps the author emphasize. So again, we get that, what is the author doing with the text structure? They give you the text structure, but they wanna know why the author chose that text structure. What is the author trying to emphasize or convey over here? Um, another one, the author organizes selection mainly by, and again, we get those verbs, but they have to verify that, that what comes after the verb is true in the story. So they have to keep going back. And I believe this one we already looked at because it's got that first part explained, that second part emphasized. So we looked at that question. And so how do we teach that? So one way, I mean, you're going to have to model and think aloud, but one way we kind of conceived of it is that I went through the tests, all the release tests, and I looked at the verbs. So which text structure verbs appeared in questions, like that beginning part of the question, and then what, how did the author use it or what did the author do with it? And I, I collected those. So there was a way shorter list over on this side. These were all the different kind of text structures. So I picked the top four of each and made manipulatives. And so there's a more scaffolded, oh, sorry, this is all my, this is real life here, guys. Um, I made a more scaffolded version that kind of gives the definition of what the thing is. And then there's a less scaffolded version where it just gives the word. So depending on where your kids are and their knowledge of those kind of verbs, you may want to give them the more scaffolded version and then slowly take it away until they can kind of come up with it on themselves. So they have the verb that gives you the text structure and then they have the verb, what is the author doing with it? And so the idea is this is, you can drop text in here. And so you would have the kids identify the text structure on one side and then say what the author is doing it on the other. And then you can also talk about like some of these things aren't that different from each other. And so it's really important that specific piece that comes after it 
that they would have to verify in the text. So for example, this is the article we've been working with. It's orange. I left the white copy in my office. But if we were looking at that section, how the need to belong influences behavior, it's really that the author is explaining or describing, because those aren't too far off really. Um, but I guess explain makes most sense because he's explaining how. So we could say that the author is explaining and then he's not really causing you to make an inference. He's straight out saying something. So we could say that the author is explaining to emphasize the idea that the need to belong influences behavior or that the author explains to support the idea that the, the need to belong influences behavior or show that the the need to belong influences behavior. But the important thing is that they can come up with the thing that comes after the show. And so once they have their verbs down, then you can kind of give them an opportunity to write. So you could give them a sentence stem on the board and then just have them use it to write something like the author explains how the need to belong influences behavior. Two, which one did I pick? Emphasize the idea that people will act or dress in a way that helps them fit in or something like that. So I was just kind of doing it off the cuff. But anyway, kind of doing that is going to get the kids hopefully to a place where they're better able to take apart those star questions and better able to use text structures for their own purposes in their own writing. Because you could also use this as a planning sheet and ask kids to choose a text structure and then compose something with a given purpose. Like they, they know they're trying to emphasize the idea that um, you know, whatever idea they're trying to emphasize and they're going to choose a text structure purposefully to achieve that purpose. And so if you take it all the way through to the writing end, it's going to really help them. So hopefully that was helpful. And, um, I hope you enjoyed my guest room. Maybe someday when you look at it, it will have stuff on the wall, but not soon. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.